It starts off with a DJ Poo voiceover. He's smoking on this early 2000s veggie pack, him and Ice Cube. The smoke starts turning into opening credits or something now. It's pretty terrifying. Imagine if that really happened to you. New Life presents a real nigga movie. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that motherfucker owed me some money. Oh my gosh. Ice Cube then starts narrating, of course, a hood movie, you know the deal. He recaps everything that happened on the previous Friday. Has it only been a week, bro, since the last movie? That don't seem right. It's not really the next Friday, is it? I got shot at for the first time, and I finally kicked Debo's ass for the first time. Debo ended up going to jail for about four years. <laughs> Now, there's rumors going around the hood saying Debo is supposed to break out next Friday. Nigga, what kind of rumor is that? Why would Debo tell anybody about his jailbreak schedule? The exact date and everything? Why the fuck is he in jail anyway? You didn't give a reason. Is it because of this fight? He got four years off this fight? He got his ass beat. Why ain't Ice Cube in jail too? Maybe it's not the fight. Maybe it was something else. He was committing hella felonies for no reason. He broke into Stanley house. All right, it's fine, bro. We can roll with it. Ice Cube goes on to explain about how he's got to live with his auntie and uncle now in Bel Air. Apparently his dad heard the rumors about Debo breaking out of jail. So he sends Ice Cube away to protect him or whatever. How old is this nigga, man? You are grown ass man this should be your decision bro how are you getting shipped off like this you like 29 Craig, your ass is on your feet they don't tend to beat your meat be on about 35 45 minutes <laughs> They're getting ready to leave and John Witherspoon slips and falls in some doo-doo. Now he got doo-doo all over him for the rest of the movie. That's childish, bro. That's not even like the same type of humor as the first one. What the fuck? This long ass doo-doo joke. Are you serious? What's that smell? <laughs> Hold on, too much. Oh, damn. Don't nobody go in the bathroom. Please don't go in the bathroom. Become that dog truck. Shut your mouth. We about to fade the black. Hey, stop! Ah! Debo and his little brother, Sticky Fingers, ambush the car and they try to get a rematch. Yeah, boy, the rematch! Bro, go change your clothes. Go get some food or something. Regroup. I'm pretty sure breaking out of jail wasn't easy as it looked. It looked pretty easy, actually. This Macaulay Culkin ass escape plan, they really broke out of jail like this? Nah, I'm surprised niggas didn't just bust a U-turn and call the cops on you right here at the first sighting. What is your strategy, Debo? What are you doing? I ain't kicking with you no more. I'm going to mommy house, man. <laughs> Ice Cube and his dad go on their road trip and they make it to Uncle Elroy's house safely. Apparently Uncle Elroy won the lottery and bought this oh ugly God. ass purple house in the suburbs. Now it's a suburbs hood movie. That doesn't make any sense. I guess it does. Hood niggas in the suburbs. All right. Mike Epps comes out of the house to greet them. He plays Ice Cube's cousin, Day Day. He's like the replacement Smokey character. Smokey's not in this one, he died or something. He's the funniest character in the whole franchise, in my opinion. It's crazy they even tried this shit without him. Mike Epps is a decent replacement though. He definitely steals every scene he's in. He's the star of these movies basically from now on, no bullshit. The rest of these new characters though, man, compared to the first one, they kinda trash, bro. So you got the Joker brothers, they're the main bad guys. They just Chicano stereotypes. I don't know what else is funny about them. Then you got this old ass Asian lady named Miss Ho. Oh, Kim, motherfucker. She just an accent. She says funny hip hop things in her accent. She barely does anything. She don't count. Then you got Baby D and Dewana. This one is Day Day's ex and she keep trying to beat him up. That's pretty funny. Sugar, she's Uncle Elroy's girlfriend. She trying to make love to Ice Cube all day or something. She a freak. It just don't hit the same, bro. I miss the other side characters. They should have made the sequel in the same neighborhood. Why would you leave the hood? That was the whole magic of the first movie. I can't believe y'all. Hey, send Betty, my love. Why are you looking good? <laughs> Uncle, who's that out there with Day Day's car? Edwana, boy's ex. Damn. Oh, shit. She writing on it? Grabbing the shit out of him. God damn. You killed my shit. 
bitch, you, you keep my shit. I got I got your bitch right here. Oh. We go back to Debo and him and Sticky Fingers are riding around still in these hot ass jumpsuits. They catch up to Ice Cube's dad at some taco stand somehow. Instead of beating his ass or something like you would expect, they call the taco stand and tell him to drop, drop everything. everything. Craig's in trouble. Come, Come quick. quick. You're five pounds lighter. Hey, someone just called and said Craig's in trouble or something. What? Craig's in trouble. I don't know. Hold on, Craig. I'm coming. Give me my money. Come on, give me a second, man. You're not even going to question this shit. Who would call you here? How would anybody know you were here? Also, why not just call Elroy and ask what's going on before you drive all the way back there, right? Am I crazy? Whatever. I feel like they went way too overboard with the wacky shit. Like, the first Friday was a regular movie, pretty much. It was grounded in reality for the most part. Now it's just getting weird. This shit feels like a TV spinoff. It barely feels like the same universe at this point. The Joker brothers got a Joker sister. Her name is Carla joker ice cube trying to holler at her but the joker brothers sick they joker dog on his dumb ass the fuck think carlos got jungle fever is it fuck that hey keep going it's lunch time eh? <laughs> yeah, get that fucker i know you like dark meat you better move you better the boys are fighting with Joker Dog, and meanwhile, John Witherspoon is making more doo-doo jokes, believe it or not. Put some hot sauce on my burrito, baby. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -oh. You literally just came back from doo-dooing. Now you gotta take another one immediately? This nigga got irritable bowel syndrome, cuz. His whole entire storyline is about Dookie. That's crazy, right? What am I watching here? Then it goes to work, and Ice Cube is chilling, smoking with Uncle Elroy. Then Uncle Elroy starts getting horny and turns into a nigga named Mr. Nasty Time? What am I watching here? It's Mr. Nasty Time. Oh, Mr. Nasty Time. Okay, so this next scene is genuinely hilarious. I've been pretty hard on this movie, but the whole Pinky segment is goaded. Pinky is a great side character. He's like a fake replacement big worm Loki. He got a silly wig on, he got the gun, whatever. He like a vegan big worm. He's played by Clifton Powell, of course. Every black movie, if you start filming a black movie, this nigga will show up automatically at your house. Not to mention, Michael Blackson is in the scene also. Can't forget about him. This is the foundation of this nigga's whole career. Motherfuckers, you motherfuckers! What the fuck is this? This is whack! I can't get jiggy with this shit! Give me my damn money back right now and I don't have no damn receipt. So Ice Cube is going through Uncle Elroy's mail earlier. That's not cool. They got some tax notice and it says they're gonna lose their big purple house by tomorrow if they don't pay. They gotta pay some money before the time run out. That's what a Friday movie is. That's every Friday movie. So Day Day is stressed out about that whole thing. Then to make matters worse, his ex shows up at his job to beat his ass again. <laughs> Hello? Remember me? I wanted to give you this. Hey, where the fuck did she come from? She just randomly walking behind the buildings and shit? These niggas in an alleyway. I don't trust her ass, bro. What the hell is going on here? Uh, suspicious, ain't they they narrowly escapes from Baby D with his life. Then he locks up the store for a sec and all the boys start smoking and bonding now. Better open up that window for the smell, get out. I got an idea. It's just a theory of mine, but I think it should work. Hey, check this out. Hey, stop posting! <laughs> Little motherfucker gonna try to rob me. Now what you done done with Day Day and Roach? Day Day is my pe- Shut up! You ain't got no gun. But where the weed at? I ain't got no weed. Shut the fuck, shut Oh, shit! Oh, shit. 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 
Day Day and his white friend Roach both get fired. It's all because of Ice Cube, dumbass. Except not really, bro. Y'all locked the store in the middle of a work day so you could smoke. You got Baby D outside vandalizing shit. You was getting fired regardless, bro. Grow up. They all sad now and they go back to the house and tell Mr. Nasty Time what was going on with the tax thing. And I got fired today. This nigga poured a lube on his son and spanked him with a belt. That's hella abusive, bro. What's wrong with you, Uncle Nasty Time? Ice Cube sees the Joker brothers carrying some money and he comes up with this plan to rob them. All we need is a big ass pack of baloney. The plan is to use some baloney to distract the Joker dog while they break into these people's house. Their next door neighbor? You've been out here one day, my nigga. You already running in people's houses, Ice Cube? Whatever, man. They do the plan, but Roach runs out of baloney, so he gives the dog some chocolate weed brownies. This nigga gonna die, bro. You're not supposed to give a dog chocolate, right? Or weed. You know, I always thought it was weird. Pops is the dog catcher, right? They should have gave this mission to him. That would have been a funny callback. It would have made more sense, honestly. But no. Give the dog some weed chocolate. That's just funny. Look at the dog. He's so high. He's gonna pass away. No more left doors around here, you hear me? I'm texting seven. Cause I gotta ride those nigga when they wet up. Cause tomorrow's a nigga gotta blow the compressor. I gotta hit with 20 G's. This bright ass glow in the dark Fubu jersey. How does nobody see this shiny ass Fubu jersey darting around their house? Doing? Huh? But I snuck in here to show you that I wasn't scared of your punk ass brothers. You did all this for me? Most of it. What the fuck is wrong with this lady? I broke into your house to prove I'm not scared of your brothers. That's ridiculous. Who would fall for that? It works though, I guess. The Joker's sister lets Ice Cube smash and he never talks to her again, I'm assuming. She never comes up ever again. This is every Friday movie. I can't believe how disrespectful this whole thing is. He breaks into their house, steals their money, smashes their sister, and poisons their dog. All in one day. You've ruined this family life, Ice Cube. You're not a good person, bro. Where's Craig? He's in the house still. Driving like a little bitch right now, man. Show you how to knock on the door. What the hell? Stop. Ruining my flow. That's the bullshit, man. Ice Cube escapes from the house, but now he gotta go back and save Day Day. He teams up with his Uncle Elroy and Pops, and this is the big action scene. It's crazy though. The original Friday climax was kinda serious. It felt like real danger was happening. Big Worm was a threatening character. So was Debo. This one is 100% play for laughs. It's these old ass men fighting some cholos. That's the climax. That's drastically different, right? I know what the f to do with you, Oh shit. He's cute, huh? He look a little frosted mini wheat. Oh, oh baby, hold on, baby. You ever had your shit pushed in? How many of us have them? Friends. Shut the fuck up! You didn't call the Samus joint with urgent message? Hell no, Willie. You starting to think like a dog. You know, you got shit all over the back of your ass. Damn. I like how Pops just got here. He doesn't even know what's going on fully, but he's ready for action. He a real ass nigga, bro. Why the fuck ain't Ice Cube doing this part? He's just standing there looking at shit. You sent your elderly father and your nasty time uncle in there to fight your battles. That's lame, bro. You on another level, Ice Cube. I'm so disappointed. They take out two of the brothers. Now it's only the small one left. Little Rey Mysterio looking ass boy. Oh, now Ice Cube wanna join the fight, huh? Cause there's only the smallest guy left. You wanna join in now. That's crazy, bro. I see what you're doing. Hey. Come on, come on, get up! Ah. 
Cube ends up losing the fight anyway. Oh God, bro, your ass is useless, man. I guess you ain't got no weapons this time. He only won that first Debo fight because of the weapons. That's real shit. I'm standing by that. Say hello to my little friend. How do you sneak up like this? You like seven feet tall. Nobody saw this nigga. <laughs> Another Friday gone, another problem solved. It's a trip to know that things can get wild in the suburbs too. They defeat Debo and the Joker brothers and they save the suburbs. All the white people safe now. You know, where are all the white people? This is the suburbs. How are the cops just getting here? I feel like somebody would have been called these niggas. And they just letting Ice Cube walk away with a cup full of money, a tube or whatever. He just broke into these people houses. Y'all not even gonna question him, huh? Yeah, they really just went all out with the wacky stoner comedy. So many doo-doo jokes, bro. There's so many doo-doo jokes. The first one definitely had a couple of doo-doo jokes, but it was different. I don't know, man. Like, there's hella serious parts in that first one. It was a slice of life type of thing. This one doesn't even feel connected low-key. It feels like a straight-to-DVD sequel. The movie's not directed by F. Gary Gray this time. I think that's where shit really went wrong. They definitely needed that nigga. It was directed by uh, this dude, Steve Carr, who also gave us such gems as a Dr. Doolittle too. Are we there yet? And Paul Blart's Mall Cop. So yeah, this nigga suck. He ruined the whole vibe. He definitely made it corny, like Dr. Doolittle type vibes. Whose man's is this? Always wondered what it would look like to have a proper sequel. Same director, same neighborhood, same Smokey. I feel like there's so many stories left to tell there. Maybe niggas was being stingy with the money. That's why the original cast didn't come back. However, as it stands, we got Mike Epps out of this whole deal, so it's fine. And Michael Blackson. And Joker Dog. Joker Dog the Goat. It's not as good as the first one. It took a hard ass left turn, but there's a lot of funny moments here. It's not the worst Friday movie. We'll get to that one, trust me. That's it though. Thanks for watching. Thanks for liking, subscribing. Hope you're having some fun holidays. Be sure to check out my brand new podcast, The BBC Club. We be talking about movies, all the new movies, year 2000 movies. Check it out. Listen to it at work or while you clean your house or something. We be clubbing. And be sure to follow me on Twitch also. I got content for you, bro. Don't be sad. I know the video over. I'm sorry, man. Okay, it's over. Oh, Mr.